In this presentation, we will create a loan amortization table that we can use to help us to create our loan payments or make our loan payments and break out the interest and principal portions of them. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're gonna go on over to our accounting tab, go on down to the balance sheet, opening up that balance sheet. We're gonna be right clicking on the tab up top so that we can duplicate it. Going on to that tab up top, right clicking on it and duplicating the tab up top. Next, we're gonna be changing the date. I'm gonna be selecting the date here. Let's bring that out to 2020, so January 31st, 2020. Now we're considering the loan balance once again down here in the loan balance. We have this loan for $72,000. we are going to assume that we make monthly payments on that loan. Now there's a couple things you need to consider with regards to the monthly payments that you make. Uh, they can be a little bit confusing. There's a couple different ways that you can set them up. If you're going to make monthly payments on a loan, you may, you're may you going to have to break out or think about the fact that there's going to be principal and interest related to that. So typically, you would want to make the payment and break out the principal and interest. However, it's not a fixed portion of principal and interest, and therefore, you're going to have to have an amortization table if you want to properly break that out. Note, however, you may work with adjusting entries at the end of the month and might want to do this in a different way. For example, if the payment is the same each month, you may want to make the full payment to the note, not dealing with the interest each month. And then in the adjusting department, either yourself or your accountant or your bookkeeper can do an adjusting entry, breaking out the interest. That might be an easier way to do that. And that would be easier to kind of set up in like bank feeds as well, because the transaction would then be the same each time you make the payment and you would simply make an adjusting entry to break out the interest and principal portion. We here are gonna be breaking out the interest and principal portion per uh, loan or per payment. Let's get an idea of what that would look like by creating an amortization table. So we're gonna be considering an amortization table that we're gonna make out. Now you might say like, why would I need to make out an amortization table? Note that if, you're, if you take out a loan, uh, typically, if it's a car loan or something like that, they're going to tell you the full amount that you're going to be making on a monthly payment amount. Uh, but they may not give you all the terms in terms of what the breakout is between interest and principal. They may not give you an amortization table, which is what you need in order to, to record the actual loan payment properly. So in order to make a fixed payment the same, there's going to have to be a change between the amount of that payment that's going to be allocated to interest and principal. Best way to understand that is just to break out an amortization table and see how this works. So for example, a loan uh, could give you possibly, normally a loan balance will give you the payment amount and you'll know the principal amount of the loan. And they may not even give you like the interest on it. Uh, they, they'll give you the, the monthly payments on it, right? Because they may not want to tell you really the interest and you could figure that out. But let's first think about this situation in, in Excel to think about what if we had the loan amount a monthly payment and then a rate of, of 5% and we wanted to figure out well what would the payments typically be uh, if that were the case there's a common formula that we can use in Excel to figure that out and then once we do that we can kind of back into that same formula and use that same formula to consider the rate so let's just think about this first so if I go here to the payment section uh, I can use formulas I'm going to go to a formula here and I'm gonna to go to the uh, functions and library and I'm gonna insert a function. Now the function is gonna be a payment. So you could say loan payment. If you wanted to look for it, search it up here in the function box and I wanna pick up a payment. So I'm gonna pick up this payment. And then if I say, okay, it gives me this little function field to help us to figure this thing out. So everything that's bold is necessary. The light amounts may not be necessary and won't be in our case. So I'm going to say the rate is this number. Now the rate's the trickiest thing because the rate is per year. So what I want to have is the rate per month. So I'm going to take that rate and divide it by 12. That's kind of the trickiest thing uh, that, that you need to consider there. Then we're going to say the number, the number of payments we're going to say is 60. And that's a result of having 60. If we take the 60 and divide it by 12, we're going to say this is a five year type of thing right five years times 12 months that's 60 payments and then we're going to say that the present value what is valued at at this point in time is the amount of the loan which is 72,000. we don't in our case need the future value or the type and you'll notice down here that it basically calculates out what the payment should be so i'm going to say okay and there's the payment 
Now, if I want to make this payment amount positive, the way I would do it is I double click on it and just put a negative in front of the P, which basically just means, hey, take this whole thing and, and multiply it times negative one. Flip the sign for me, please. So I'll put a negative right there. And there it is. Now, this is usually what you would have in a loan form. If you have a long loan, loan document, they're going to tell you, hey, this is the amount of the loan. This is what you're purchasing or the amount of money we're going to give you. This is the payment that we're going to have on it. It's rounded, by the way, too. Just realize that it's it's uh, rounded to the nearest dollar. If I go back to the home tab numbers and increase the numbers, we've got some decimals there, right? But I'm going to round it up to that. And they may give you the rate or they may force you to kind of figure out the rate. You know, you want to ask what the rate is, but they may not. It's not required in the terms because you can impute the rate. And then they're going to give you the payment. So that's how you would kind of figure this out. Now, this number still doesn't really help you with making the actual payments, though, because you know how much you're going to pay, but you know, you do not know how much is going to be broken out between interest and principal. So you still need an amortization table. Now, let's just consider what if they gave you this information, but they didn't give you the rate, right? And you want to know what the interest rate is to make your amortization table well in that case you could say well i know this number and i don't know this number uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of assume the same formula and just use a tool to help us to do this instead of creating another formula to figure this number out that being the unknown i'm going to say hey excel i'm going to use the same formula copy this and paste it here so we have the same formula it's wrong though, because I don't know what this number is. And then I can try to figure it out. I can try to say, well, what if it was, you know, 3%, then I would, then I would be there. Or let's, let's take the formatting here. What did I do there? Let's take the formatting and say, uh, a percent home and then format it here. What if it was 3%? That you know, I can try to figure out what if it was 9% and try to figure it out that way. Or I can let Excel kind of do that type of estimate. I, I could say, hey, Excel, just do whatever you got to do to get that to be that number. And that's going to be a useful tool. Just want to point this out. If we go to the uh, data tab up top, I'm going to be off the cell over here. I'm off the cell. I'm going to say, I want to choose what if analysis and goal seek. And then I'm going to ask Excel, I'm going to say, hey, Excel, uh, would you set this cell to be, and I'm going to hard code this number, 1359 by changing <clears throat> this cell. So set this cell to be what I want it to be, 1359 by changing this cell. And then I'm going to say, okay. And it'll figure out, notice, the, the rate by basically trial and error. So that's just a useful tool to have. Once we have this information, I'm going to go ahead and delete this now. I don't really, then, then we can make our amortization table and this will kind of show us the problem that, that is there. So amortization table, number of payments, 60, the payment amount always going to be the same, which is going to be this one, three, five, nine. That's rounded, however. And then we have the interest rate and then the principal, and this is the amount of the loan. So in other words, at time zero, the amount of the loan is 72,000. First payment we're going to assume is a month later. The payment amount is going to be this amount. It's always that amount, right? And then the interest on it is going to be, interest is going to be calculated as, if let's pull this up in the trustee calculator first, the loan balance, 72,000 times the rate, 0 0.05. That would be for a year though. And we want monthly interest. So I'm going to take that and divide it by 12. That would be the interest for a month. So if we did that on a calculation, I would say, all right, here's the loan balance times the 5% divided by 12. So 300. That means that of this payment we made, I'm going to take the payment, 300 of it minus 300 is interest. Therefore, the principal is going to be reduced only by the 1059. Again, it's rounding. There's, I took out the pennies. So that means that the new principal is the 72,000 minus the 1059 or 70,941. So now that means that the next payment, we're say, we're gonna have the same payment amount, which is still this number, but now the interest is gonna go down because now I'm paying interest on the use of the money and the principal went down to here, right? So now if I think the interest is gonna have to change, if I want this number to be the same, the relation between these two numbers will, will then change. So we're gonna say, all right, now this is the new balance times the 5% divided by 12 and that means that if the payment is this and the interest is only 296 this time 
Now the principal reduction is that. And so the new principal is the prior principal minus the principal deduction. And now we're down to here. And you can see how this will change each time. So when I make a transaction to make this payment, I can't just memorize within zero the breakout between interest and principal because it's gonna change in this type of format. So I need to deal with that in some kind of way. Let's do this one more time and then I'll just copy this down. So we're, we'll take that amount. The interest is now gonna be now the 69,878 times the 5% up here divided by 12. So the interest portion goes down again. The principal reduction is gonna be the total payment minus the interest there. And then the new principal is now the 69,878 minus that reduction is now down to here. Now, if I copy this all the way down, this should go down to zero at the end of the loan term. The principal should go down to zero. So what if I use my uh, zoom or auto fill function by highlighting these tabs, putting our cursor on the little button over here, this is the auto fill button, and dragging it down. Does it do what we want to? Something looks wrong. It looks like it went wrong right here. So this number's right. This number's wrong. What happened? It pulled the 5% down. I don't want it to pull that cell down. I want that to stay there. Therefore, I'm going to make that an absolute reference and then try it again. So I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to say this one, I need to do something. I need to make that 5% stick, not move. So I'm going to put my cursor in here. I'm going to select F4, or you can simply put a dollar sign before the B and for, before the three. And that'll tell Excel, hey, Excel, don't move that cell down. Like when I copy it, don't move it, please. So we're going to say enter and let's see if that works. I'm going to highlight these cells again, use the old autofill to drag it down. Does it do what we expect it to do? Let's check. That one looks good. That looks good this time. This looks good, doesn't it? Right? Yeah, that looks good. And this looks good. So now let's copy it all the way down and see if this number then goes down to zero after 60 payments. If it goes down to zero, that's pretty good evidence that we built this thing properly. So I'm going to say, all right, let's autofill this all the way down. We're going to put our cursor on the autofill. I'm going to drag this down, and auto is going to drive it down. Like there, auto drives it down. And once it's down there, Dr. Phil does the calculations. So let it go, and there's the calculation. So there's the zero. It went back down to zero. So that's going to be our payments. Now look at this last payment down here. Same payment amount, but interest is only 6%, and all of the rest is principal, given the fact that it's almost down to zero in terms of the principal amounts. So huge change between the distribution between interest and principal as uh, we get later on in the loan. And that's a result of us wanting to make the fixed, fix the payment amount. So we're trying to fix the payment amount, which means that there's this distribution difference between the beginning and ending of the loan. So when we record this, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to record this. We first need an amortization table because this information is not enough for us to be able to break it out. And then once we have the amortization table, we want to think, okay, do I want to do this each time to break it out each payment? Or do I want to say, hey, look, I'm going to make this easy and just make the whole payment go to a reduction of principal. It'll be wrong until we do adjusting entries, which I'll have my accountant do uh, possibly, or I will do on a periodic basis when I need to at the end of the month or the end of the year. We here are going to take the, the for this method, take each payment and look at the amortization table and record the interest and principal in accordance with the amortization table. However, doing so means we cannot just memorize the transaction because the transaction is going to di be different for every payment that we make. We'll take a look at that next time.